three things that are as awesome as Fridays, chocolate chip cookies, the Bulldogs, and vacation. But as far as that last one goes, American workers are taking less of it. Reasons why are minutes away. First up, this October 24th, a man being hailed as a hero. This is Kevin Vickers. He's the sergeant at arms in Canada's parliament. When a gunman entered that government building Wednesday and started shooting, it was Vickers who stopped the attack by shooting and killing the gunman. Only 10 people have been sergeant at arms since 1867. It's a ceremonial position. It's also a law enforcement position. The 58-year-old officer spent 28 years with the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. His brother believes this is the first time Vickers ever exchanged fire with anyone. He extended his condolences to the family of Corporal Nathan Cirillo, a guard whom the gunman killed near the National War Memorial. Canadian officials now say they believe the gunman acted alone, but that he had connections to radical Islamists. Canadian Prime Minister Stephen Harper says Canadians will not be intimidated by terrorism. We will we'll be vigilant, but we will not run scared. We will be prudent, but we will not panic. And as for the business of government, well, here we are in our seats, in our chamber, in the very heart of our democracy and our work. It was an inexcusable betrayal of our values and our mission and our students' trust. The length of time that this behavior went on and the number of people involved is really shocking. It uh, was a wrongdoing that could have and should have been stopped much earlier by individuals who were in positions of influence and oversight. Many could have sounded the alarm more forcefully. Okay, what's that about? The University of North Carolina, a new report came out this week about alleged academic fraud at the school. This scandal first came to light about five years ago, but Wednesday's independent report gave new details saying the fraud lasted for 18 years. What happened? Students allegedly got high grades for classes that were never actually held. How many students? The report says at least 3,100, but likely much higher. Were athletes involved? The report says 47% of those who benefited were athletes. Why? Fake grades for fake classes reportedly helped some stay eligible to play their sports. The fallout. Four employees were fired. Five more were punished. All three UNC basketball championships could be in jeopardy, and the school's reputation is stained. A new study says Americans are taking less vacation time than at any time in the last four decades. This comes from the U.S. Travel Association, which supports Americans' vacation and travel time. It says that last year, Americans took an average of 16 days vacation. That average was more than 20 days in the year 2000. Factors. A work-life trainer says American workers are afraid of being laid off. They think working long hours and skipping vacation time will help them keep their jobs. But he says people who don't take vacation time can get laid off just like anyone else. Some Americans don't vacation because they're afraid of work piling up when they're gone, and others see their worth based on their work. They feel guilty for taking time off or unplugging from their devices. Well, it's time to take attendance. Hope you're ready to roll. Ridgeview High School in Orange Park, Florida is ready. The Panthers there aren't kitting around. But they're not the only cats on the prowl. How about the Cougars? Lions Decatur Northeast High School in Lions, Nebraska is on a roll. And on the Pacific Coast, it's the Eagles of Lincoln Middle School who are watching in Selma, California. As National Teen Driver Safety Week rolls on, some good news about car crashes. Deadly accidents in the U.S. are at historic lows. A big part of the reason why technology and testing have gotten better. A big reason for that? Manufacturers have to prove their cars are safe using crash test dummies. The newest dummies can give incredibly smart lessons. You've all seen the hard-hitting slow-motion crashes and the dummy in the driver's seat absorbing blow after blow. This is the story of one of the great unsung heroes of our time. You can talk to a, a three-year-old, you can talk to an 80-year-old, and everybody knows what a crash test dummy is. 
He first started sitting in for us in 1952 when a colonel in the U.S. Air Force was worried about the safety of his pilots. Back in that day, it was actually the testing was done by Colonel Stapp from the Air Force, and he was actually very concerned, ironically, because he said, the Air Force pilots, I'm losing more in car crashes coming to work than I'm losing in uh, our pilots being downed in an aircraft. To begin with, the dummies used in cars were rather crude, made of wood, rope, and sandbags. But over the years, he's evolved into a much more sophisticated piece of technology and a family man. So the population of dummies expanded out from the basic male to a female to a very large male, and then it included a child population because the injury rate in children in cars was dramatic. Their role has always been the same, thousands of crash tests, each one helping manufacturers design safer cars. With the introduction of airbags, from the initial crumple zones to steering wheel design, every part that's in a vehicle has improved in design over the years and all benchmarked against a crash test dummy. This was shown rather dramatically in 2009 the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety in the U.S. tested a new Chevrolet against a 1950s model. Almost all the dummies in use today are made by the American company Humanetics. Here, at their European hub in Germany, the dummies are put through their paces. With each bone-crunching hit, they're being prepared, or rather trained, for future customers. And there's a new addition to the family, 20 years in the making. So this is Thor. What's different about him? It's our most advanced dummy. The neck has not just rubber, it has wires and, and, and damping material that, um, that simulates the ligaments in the neck. You have a very complicated measurement system in that chest, so you can see the complete movement of the ribs in three dimensions. But what's special is that it's more biofidelic. It has, um, it's more human-like than it's ever been before. We have a lot to thank the crash test dummy for. He's helped save countless lives. And this is what makes life as creators of the dummy so personally rewarding. There's not a presentation I do that doesn't show the number of deaths have been reduced year over year as a result of our test equipment. And if we can continue to save lives, reduce the amount of deaths, that's more important to me than anything else. In a way, this looks like how a toy ship might be shoved into a bathtub. But this ship weighs 3,500 tons and cost about $360 billion. Splash. It's the USS Detroit, brand new to the US Navy. Sideways launches like this aren't just amazing to look at, they're pretty common. They're usually done when there's not enough space to launch the ship stern first. That's in reverse for you land lovers. That's one way to find out if it's in ship shape. Watch it roll head over holes. It's a test they had on deck. It certainly holds water, and it easily lets you know if the ship's seaworthy. Now, I don't want to rock the boat with too many puns here or tread too much on your weekend. Hope you have a great and safe one with whatever floats your boat.